The preseason is over, but the New York Giants have some big picture questions that still need answering. I'll tell you what they are coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Chain, a credential member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for New York Giants on SI, which is where you can find my written work. And as always, a big welcome on in to my Blue Crew community members, to my everydayers, to my newcomers, and everybody in between. Thank you so much. We're spending part of your day with us here on the Locked on Giants podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube, please, won't you consider subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, if you do, click the little notification bell. So every time you I post a video, you are notified. And like the video. That all helps. And for those of you who are listening on our audio platforms, if you wouldn't mind, a five-star review would certainly be appreciated. It all helps in the long run. So if you enjoy the programming... And can, you know, spare a few minutes to do those little things for me. Greatly appreciate it. All right. On today's Locked on Giants podcast, the preseason is over, but we have some big picture questions. And I'm not talking about cornerback two or offensive line or anything like that. I'm talking really big picture questions. And I've got two of them that I'm going to mention uh, coming up in the first segment. Then in segment two, we're going to take a look at some of the starting jobs that were up for grabs during uh, the summer. How do I think they were settled, right? Now, no one, no depth chart has come out yet. Um, the Giants, as I record this, they're still making roster cuts, but I'm going to do my best guess to answer some of those questions as far as who won starting jobs or key reserve jobs. Then finally, the Giants did make about a dozen moves uh, they made those on Sunday and um, nothing major there, but I'll just quick go over them and I'll mention, you know, the, the one that isn't really a surprise, but it's kind of disappointing because it kind of speaks to the problems that this, that this Giants team have had over the years or at least recently. So we'll talk about that for a little bit and then we will, of course, wrap things up for you. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get into it. Now, I'm going to start off with the big picture questions. And no, I'm not talking about positions. I'm talking big, big picture. So I have two things that just kind of irk me a little bit, um, things that have me just a little bit concerned. You know, hopefully they, they work out and it's not going to, you know, be an issue. But based on history, it has been an issue. So the first thing is the Giants, you know, if you go back to when G Assistant General Manager Brandon Brown spoke to the media a couple weeks ago, he mentioned that the team is going to be probably be very aggressive on the waiver wire uh, once final cuts were made by the other teams. Now, look, I get it that every team does it, and I get it that you constantly want to look to upgrade your roster, but the statistics really show that, you know, there's, there's over a thousand guys that get cut and of them, maybe what 50 of them or so land up on rosters. So the quality that you usually find on the waiver wire is slim pickings. And my whole thing here is, you know, I get it. You can't keep everybody. I get it. There are going to be holes and you can't address every position on the roster, but you don't want to have to be putting in waiver claims for, you know, more than maybe one or two guys. And I just have a feeling the Giants are going to put in a lot of waiver claims, you know, without having seen the waiver wire, they haven't gone through waivers yet. That will take place on Tuesday at four o'clock. I just have a feeling that they're going to put a lot of waiver claims in. 
And what bothers me about that is, is that, you know, you look at some of the other positions and you say, where was there a disconnect between adding the talent and developing it? So let's take, for example, the cornerback spot. Cornerback is still very much a question mark. We still don't know who cornerback two is. We probably can safely assume that the Giants are going to scour the waiver wire to find a cornerback two. Now, will they find a quality guy? They might. A few years ago, they found Fabian Moreau and, you know, had luck with him. But you also wonder about, you know, did they adequately stock talent, the young talent at the position? We know that Joe Shane tried to add a cornerback in the draft, wasn't able to do so. Instead, they went with a slot cornerback, you know, and Drew Phillips. And then, of course, they were hounded by injuries, which made the whole situation worse. So now they're basically facing having to look at the waiver wire. And you sit there and you say, well, what happened to the development of, you know, like a Trey Hawkins? What happened to, you know, some of these other guys that they were, you know, supposedly developing? Were they just, you know, deemed not good enough in the eyes of the coaches? Possibly, but the point being is, is you don't want to have to rely on the waiver wire to fill your spots. You want to try and develop from within. Now, I actually went and I pulled up a list of some waiver wire uh, guys that they picked up um, going back to the beginning of uh, the Joe Shane era. And quite honestly, you know, I'm looking at this list here. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm not so sure this is a very impressive looking list. Now, this list you can find on spotrack.com under NFL transactions, and you can sort it according to a date range. And you can say, okay, who, the guys, who are some of the guys that they've claimed on waivers? And I'm just, you know, some of the, the names I'll read to you that, you know, I think made some kind of contribution and this, again, is over the course of the Joe Shane Brian Dable era. So they were able to find, um, let's see, Nick McLeod was a good pickup for them. Um, they found uh, Jason Pinnock, who turned into a, a, a starter for them. Tyree Phillips was claimed, uh, was awarded to them off waivers. Um, a good guard, uh, tackle uh, guard candidate. Isaiah Hodgins, wide receiver, stepped in. Um, basically those are the guys that were awarded to them off waivers that really, you know, made a difference. Some other names you've got, you know, you might recognize some of them. You might not. This year you had Christian Holmes, Mario Goodrich, Nathan Rourke was awarded to them off waivers. Deion Jackson, Ray Wilborn, uh, back in 2023, Wyatt Davis in 2022, Justin Lane, Jack Anderson, uh, Bailey Gaither, uh, wide receiver back in 2022, Harrison Han, a cornerback, Elijah Griffin, a cornerback in 2022, and Nate Meadows, uh, excuse me, Nate Med Doors, a cornerback. So the point being is, is that when you go the waiver wire route, chances are, you know, you might get lucky, but most times you're probably not going to get lucky. So just not something you want to see, but then again, the Giants figure, okay, we're sixth in the order, and maybe we can pick up some guys, you know, who were maybe cut because there just weren't enough numbers available, you know, on their previous team. So who knows? Maybe they'll luck, luck out. So I just wanted to mention that. Now, the other thing I want to mention that I'm not sure I agree with the Giants' approach, and this is something that head coach Brian Dable mentioned when he spoke to the media on Sunday, and that's basically his practice approach for the next two weeks. Now, for those who don't know, this week is kind of like a bye week, but it's not really a bye because the Giants are going to practice and on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then they're going to have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Um, so it's kind of like a bye, but, you know, Dable was asked if, you know, they're, they're going to get started on the Minnesota Vikings. And he basically said, nah, we're not really going to do a whole lot with that. You know, we might do some carded practices and whatnot, but, you know, we're not going to really get into the installs and all that stuff until the following week, Labor Day week. And I don't know, guys, I realize it's just three days, but the starters, you know, as I mentioned in a previous show, the starters didn't get a whole lot of live game action. 
And, you know, you want the Giants to come out of the gate quickly. And I don't know, for, for me, for three days, it's like, why not do a little bit more and get a jump start on installing stuff so that you can ensure you can get out of the gate quickly? I'm not sure I agree with the logic. I'm not sure I understand the logic there. I hope it doesn't come back to bite them. You know, Dable said something into the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing here, that if you start too soon, you know, it becomes stale. And I'm sitting there going, well, it's your job. Why would it be stale? So I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that approach that the Giants are taking. Hopefully, you know, it's much ado about nothing. And they come out and they start fast against the Vikings and they win. And it's all, you know, water under the bridge and whatnot. But I got to be honest with you and just say that that kind of raised my antenna a little bit. Just because I remember how last year they came out of the gate against the Cowboys and they got steamrolled and they never recovered from that punch in the mouth that they took. So I sure would hate to see that happen again because I need this team to start winning as we all do. So, all right, coming up next, there were some starting jobs, key position jobs up for grabs this summer. How did those battles get settled? I'm going to tell you what I think happened right after this. Hey, Giant fans. So when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. They help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but who might be open to the perfect role. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours when they use LinkedIn. And did you know that LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier? They've just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process faster. Find out why 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring by posting your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Giant fans, thank you so much for making a Locked On Giants podcast your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On Fantasy Football podcast. Get daily insight into the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And coming soon, ladies and gentlemen, an all new Blue Crew community. Okay, I'm taking the program. I'm going to expand it. I've been trying out some different things. I have some ideas to really turn it into a, a true Blue community. If you would like information about the Blue Crew in the meantime, the information can be found in the show notes. Basically, it's, I like to think of it as more than just a texting service, but it's a way that I can communicate directly via text with uh, those of you who sign up to be a part of the community. I've been sending out stats. Um, I'm going to be sending out um, the weekly player breakdowns from the games that's going to start um, with the week one of the Vikings game. Uh, I answer questions. I do videos exclusively for that group. So much um, I, I'm going to try and do for that group this year. And I believe we're also going to roll out a newsletter at some point. I'm not sure when that is, but I think that's on, on deck. So if you want information on how to try it out for free for 14 days, just check out the show notes. It's the blue crew community and it's join subtext. Um, that's uh, what you want to look for in the show notes. All right. In this segment, there were some starting jobs of open for the New York Giants this summer. How did they get resolved? Now, by my count, the jobs that had to be uh, filled, the starting jobs, cornerback two, starting safety, the three tech on the defensive line, tight end, and the slot cornerback. Now, the cornerback situation is kind of muddied right now because of injuries. You've got Cordell Flott, who was projected to be the starting cornerback too. He's week to week with a quad issue. Um, Nick McLeod has been kind of filling in there, but I still think that they go waiver wire for that position. I, I'm not 
convinced that, you know, they're going to roll with Nick McLeod. And then, oh, now all of a sudden Cordell Flapp becomes healthy and now they plug him back in. I think they're going to have to try and fill that with a veteran off the waiver wire. Just my guess there. Um, slot cornerback so much as I, you know, since I brought it up, you know, Andrew Phillips will probably win that job. But the problem is, is he is currently dealing with an injury. So, you know, do they plug Darnay Holmes in there for the time being? I don't know that they will. I mean, Darnay Holmes also was dealing with an injury. In the, and the problem that I have in trying to figure this stuff out, to be honest with you, is I don't know how bad these injuries are. I mean, they're, they're week to week. But, you know, without really having been in the locker room since, uh, what was it, Saturday night, and a lot of the players were gone by the time they let us in the locker room, I wasn't really able to, to find out what I needed to find out. So uh, right now I'm just going on, you know, I'm, I'm giving you educated guesses. But I do think for the slot cornerback, it's probably going to be Drew Phillips. Um, that's the guy who's going to be their primary slot cornerback, assuming that his injury isn't something that's going to be week to week. Okay, at safety, that was a battle between Dane Belton and Tyler Newbin. Now, Tyler Newbin got off to a slow start because he was dealing with an injury. Came on strong there at the end, but you know what? I still have a gut feeling that it's Dane Belton's job. I think Dane Belton probably edged Tyler Newbin out just by a little bit. Now that said, I could potentially see them, you know, sharing that job because I think the Giants, they're going to play uh, a lot of three safety. You know, is Isaiah Simmons going to be on the field? Maybe not in one of those positions, but you'll see him on the field. You'll see him in the slot. Um, you know, and I think they're going to try and get Newbin involved. So I could see like a three safety combo of, uh, Jason Pinnock, Tyler Newbin and Dane Belton. But I think Belton is going to win that starting job. That would be my best guess right now. But by the end of the year, I can conceivably see Newbin taking that job over. All right. The three technique spot, that's Nacho's job. Raheem Nunes Roches. I mean, he had that job to begin with and, um, I'm not going to say he had the greatest camp. I'm not going to say he had a, a lousy camp, but all things considered again, because of the injuries and whatnot, I think that's Nacho's job, but I'm curious to see if they work Elijah Chapman in there. I don't know that they will, at least not initially, but Chapman, you know, he's, he's been to the summer training camp darling and certainly made a name for himself in a good way with his play and his hustle. The only other position I had where there was maybe a question mark as to who the starter would be, and quite frankly, I don't know if this really even matters to mention it because I think they'll, you know, when they go to this position, um, they might do more 12 personnel or whatnot, but tight end, you know, I think by default, Daniel Bellinger is going to be TE1 and Theo Johnson is going to be TE2. Now, I'm not so sure we're going to see a whole lot in terms of 12 personnel, which is one running back, two tight ends. I think we'll see a lot more 11 personnel because the strength of this offense right now, or at least the skill position group, is the wide receivers. But, um, you know, I think Bellinger starts off as, as the starter, but I wouldn't be surprised if down the line Theo Johnson starts to surpass him for snaps as the starter. And, you know, I, I say starter – and I should should have put this disclaimer in here. Starter means basically you just you took the first snap of the game. It doesn't necessarily mean that you played the entire game and went the distance or the majority of the game. It just means you started the game. You were out there for the first play of the scrimmage. So, you know, I think as the year goes on, you might see a little bit more uh, snap increase and, and targets and whatnot, maybe for Theo Johnson over Daniel Bellinger. Just a gut feeling I have there. All right. Now, coming up next, the Giants made about a dozen moves. Nothing too shocking. Maybe one thing disappointing. We'll run down those moves right after this. Hey, Giant fans. So you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. 
All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel it anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America's number one sportsbook. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, and we're going to close out the show with the roster moves that were announced on Sunday. Uh, Brian Dable has an interesting, on his video call, I managed to get the first question in, and Dable said, oh, by the way, I've got, you know, 10 roster moves we made. Would you like them? And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, uh, yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> it was so funny. My husband was listening. Uh, he was in the other room listening to the call. And he says, what did Dable think you were going to say? No, give them to me on Tuesday. But just a nice little cute moment there. I mean, sometimes, you know, that happens but whatnot. But um, the moves that were made, really no surprises here. Um, and again, this is as of Monday. Not, you know, we, we've got some nitty gritty moves to to that need to be made. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but the moves that were made include running back, Josh Kelly, Lorenzo Lingard, wide receivers, John Giles and a year, uh, Asante offensive lineman, Marcus McKeithen, a draft pick, by the way, a couple of years ago was a draft pick. I think he was a six rounder, uh, defensive lineman, Kyler bow linebacker, Trey Kaiser, cornerback, Christian Holmes, uh, safety Clayton Isbell, who was signed, uh, I think he was uh, added off waivers recently, as a matter of fact. So he didn't make the cut. Those who had their contracts terminated, Joshua Kelly. Actually, I had him in the, in the first group, but Joshua Kelly is uh, a vested veteran. So he was not waived. He had his contract terminated. The difference being is um, if you're waived, you have fewer than four years accrued experience. Whereas if your contract is terminated, it means you're a vested veteran. You have at least four plus years of experience. So Joshua Kelly had his uh, contract terminated, cornerback Breon Borders, and offensive tackle Matt Nelson had their contracts terminated as well. And then those who were waived injured, they're going to probably land on IR unless they get an injury settlement. Defensive lineman Timmy Horn, who tore his Achilles, um, defensive back Jonathan Sutherland, who had a burner in week two. And I don't think he played uh, against the Jets. I don't remember seeing him. So um, he'll probably go to IR and then they'll probably give him a, uh, a, a injury settlement. And then the last guy um, I want to mention is kicker Jude McIntamey. Now, Jude McIntamey qualifies for an international roster exemption. So if the Giants want to keep him around, he can go to the practice squad, but he won't count against the limit because he has international status. He comes through the international pathway program. So that's the other move we can assume that's going to be made. That one wasn't announced, but that's just common sense. Now it's interesting as I record this on a Monday evening, the other moves, there have been no leaks regarding the other moves. And I think the reason for that is you've got some guys who are banged up and you've got that new injured reserve rule in which you can put up to two guys on injured reserve, but designate them to return. So whereas in the past, the, uh, the old rule says, if you put a guy on IR at the cut down date, that's it. They were gone for the year. Now you can designate two guys uh, for return at the cut down date. The drawback is, is it comes out of your eight allotted during the season. And I'm not sure if the Giants are going to have anybody that qualify that. I mean, really, the only guy I could think of, maybe Micah McFadden, if he's not ready. Um, Gunnar Olszewski could be a guy, but I I, I can't see using, uh, using a, a, one of those designations on a punt returner. Would they maybe use it on Darnay Holmes? Again, he had the uh, a neck injury that he suffered against the Jets, so that's a possibility. But I think if you're going to use that, that designation, take advantage of that rule, you want to do so with a starter or a key reserve. And really, Micah McFadden's the only one who fits that, that uh, designation, as far as I'm concerned. So we'll see what the Giants do there. One other um, item of note, I know there's been a lot of debate about how many quarterbacks will the Giants keep on the roster. I have said all along it's going to be three. And some of you, you know, said, 
well, what about the new tweak to, the, to you know, the quarterback rule, the emergency quarterback rule? Um, basically, they, the there was a proposal that the third quarterback be allowed to be elevated unlimited number of times from the practice squad. Well, folks, today it was announced that the NFLPA rejected that. So, no, you can no longer elevate um, a, a uh, third quarterback from the practice squad unlimited times and not have him not have to worry about him being exposed to waivers. All right. So the way the rule is going to work is basically how it worked last year. Um, you're going to have to have your third quarterback on your roster. If you designate him as the emergency quarterback, that counts against your uh, active list, but the guy can't go into the, to the game unless the two quarterbacks in front of him are, are injured. So it's kind of like how they did it way back in the day. I, I forget how many years ago, but they used to do it very similar to that way back in the day, I think in the nineties or maybe it was that the two thousands or something like that. But I remember they used to do it that way. So that being said, that pretty much assures that Tommy DeVito should make this roster. I mean, I would be absolutely surprised if he doesn't, because as I said on uh, the show the other day, the roster projection show, Tommy DeVito knows the system and, you know, you could sit there and say, well, they could certainly upgrade. Well, yeah, they could, I suppose, but Brian Dable seems to favor quarterbacks who know the system, who have performed in the system, because if you do have an emergency, the last thing you want to do is have to sit and, and spoon feed a new quarterback who's maybe not as familiar with the language and the route concepts and the philosophies that, you know, they're running on offense. So, I just think DeVito makes it. I think they carry the three quarterbacks. You know, I think you have to. Drew Locke, we don't know uh, for sure if he's going to be okay. You know, he's still taking it slow as they bring him back, still kind of week to week. Uh, Daniel Jones, we know about his injury history. I think if you're the Giants, you have to carry the third quarterback. It has to be DeVito. But we'll see if they agree or disagree because, as I said, they had Monday off. Players are coming in on Tuesday, so they'll do a, another updated um, medical check to see where everybody's at, and that's going to probably drive some decisions, not just at quarterback, but at other spots as well. All right, Giant fans, that's going to do it for this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. As always, thank you for spending part of your day with us. Coming up this week, I'm going to have Mike Sando from The Athletic on, and uh, we're just going to keep rolling right along as we get you ready for the start of the regular season next week, we kick it off. Regular season coverage. Can't wait. It's been a long time coming. Until then, everybody, have a good one, and I'll see you tomorrow.